academic practice is really incorporating research methods and educational techniques into your clinical practice in order to make you a better practitioner and improve the patient experience. To me, academic practice is doing the clinical work that I do every day at Women's College Hospital the best that I can. Academic practice means to me a combination of working with your modality but also being educated, educating others, working with clinical research, or even just looking for ways that you can improve. To me, academic practice means the blending of our three main missions, which are, of course, clinical education and research. And I think the one thing that really unites those three missions is uh, the sense of curiosity. Uh, curiosity for how the world works, you know, what we're seeing on the images, how we can make the images better, how we can improve the patients. Outcome. So I don't think that advanced practice MRTs or nurses will ever replace uh, clinical staff who focus on their clinical work. I think there is always a need for a broad spectrum of people with different levels of interest in research and education. In order to gain new skills or new ways of thinking in either domain, uh, you're reliant upon research and education. It may not be your research which is informing you, uh, but someone's research along the way will lead you to those new ways of thinking or new techniques or new ways of doing your job. So you can have dedicated point of care bedside nurses who want to be at the bedside looking after their patients for their whole career, and that's okay. But the work they do and the questions they see at the bedside, they can bring that to the advanced practice nurse or the tech, and those people will work together they are interdependent roles. There's huge value in building academic practice culture in JDMI. It, it's twofold. It does benefit the patient because we would be on the cutting edge doing the right thing for the patient at the right time regardless of what modality is. But it also benefits the staff. The staff are very engaged in the care that they provide and they certainly benefit both personally from the satisfaction that they gain and professionally. But most importantly for the patients, the improvements we make will make the patient go through a better experience in the care that we provide for them. back to Florence Nightingale and her discussion around uh, hand hygiene. So it, it's a very old concept, so maybe she didn't publish anything, but she was very clear when she spoke to the nurses in, in, within her unit to say, you must wash hands when you're looking after patients. My opinion, JD Mai is academic practice. This is our mission. I think academic practice uh, fits in the JDMI at all levels. I think a lot of people think that it's just at the physician level where they provide all their educational speeches and presentations, which I find are, are very useful. But um, at the level of a technologist or a clerical, they can also guide and lead change as well. I think every technologist can have some sort of academic practice in their day-to-day -day activity. Can you help me? Does this seem like a valid project? How do I do a poster on this? What steps? I think we all do great work individually, but if we can, as a group together, strive to do even more and make more improvements in the work that we do, I think can imagine what we can do with that. Advanced training in my role has helped me better assist patients. I had a patient call me and it seemed like she needed help. She was starting to talk to me about uh, the way people are treating her, her disability, and how depressed she felt, and getting into her personal life. And then all of a sudden, she has mentioned she was um, borderline suicidal. By taking a course in mental health, it actually helped me in the situation. I knew exactly what words to use. I sort of applied it and um, she actually at the end of the call said thank you for helping me. Well, I went home, I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about it. To develop as a profession, we really need to embrace the changes associated with the technology that we use every day and the clinical practices that we employ. And using academic practice 
and developing that culture is the best way to do it. Uh, to colleagues that think that academic practice doesn't belong in medical imaging, I really beg to differ. The reason why we do what we can do uh, in terms of patient care is because of much research and education. So I just can't imagine if everybody as a group can participate in advanced learning, what we can accomplish. To colleagues that are challenged by academic practice, I would stress to them the importance of pushing the envelope and thinking outside the box. Doing so will allow us to provide the best care to our patients. As long as your values and goals are uh, towards making patients uh, healthier and more comfortable um, and propelling best practices and quality, that's academic practice. I think you have an obligation. You have an obligation to do the right thing. You have an obligation to your profession to be the best that you can. And it, it, there's a scope to it. You can go to the end where you are doing tons of presentations or writing papers, but you can also go on a small scope where you're just looking at your day-to-day -day operations and going to your supervisor and saying, what if we change this? I mean, that in itself drives things forward and allows you to make changes that, you know, it could be a small paper. It doesn't have to even be a paper. It can just be something that's done in your department. But in the end, you're still working within academic practice. And I think there's a place for that amongst all areas.